Hello, welcome to the last section of this video course, Application Integration. In the previous section, we explored about web services. In this section, we will first see how to find configuration files. Use YAML for configuration files, Python for configuration files, and class as namespace for configuration values. We will also learn to design scripts for composition and use logging for control and audit output. We will then step ahead to combine two applications into one, and many applications using the command design pattern. Next, we'll explore about managing arguments and configuration in composite applications, wrapping and combining CLI applications. We will also have a look at wrapping a program and checking the output and to control complex sequences of steps. Let's move to the first video of this section that deals with finding configuration files. In this video, we are going to first import the path class, the chain map class, and get the configuration files, then move to define the application's built in defaults, iterate to load the file, and finally reverse the list and create the final chain map and return the final configuration mapping. So, we start by importing the path class and the chain map class. Next, we define an overall function to get the configuration files. We also need to create paths for the various locations. Here we have defined config file and defined various paths. These are called pure paths because there's no relationship with the file system. They start as names of potential files. Now define the application's built in defaults. Each individual configuration file is a mapping from key to value. The various mapping objects will form a list. This becomes the final chain map configuration mapping. We'll assemble the list of maps by appending items and then reverse the order after the files are loaded. If a system wide configuration file exists, load this file. Iterate through other locations looking for a file to load. This loads the first of the files that it finds and then add this code. Here we've included the if break pattern to stop after the first file is found. This modifies the loop from the default semantics of the for all to mean there exists. Then we reverse the list and create the final chain map. The list needs to be reversed so that the local file is searched first, then system settings and finally the application default settings. Then we return the final configuration mapping. Once we built the configuration object, we can use the final configuration like a simple mapping. This object supports all of the expected dictionary operations. One of the most elegant features of any object oriented language is being able to create simple collections of objects. In this case, the objects are file system path objects. As noted in the fourth section, the path object has a resolve method that can return a concrete path built from a pure path. In this video, we used the exists method to determine if a concrete path could be built. The open method when used to read a file will resolve the pure path and open the associated file. In part one of this video course, we looked at the basics of using a dictionary. Here we've combined several dictionaries into a chain. Let's go to our Python command shell. We will first import the video file and run the module. Then let's import chain maps as shown. When a key is not located in the first dictionary of the chain, then later dictionaries in the chain are checked. This is a handy way to provide default values for each key in the mapping. Here's an example of creating a chain map manually. The config object is built from three separate mappings. The first might be details from a local file such as bash login. The second might be a system wide setting from the etc profile file. The third contains application wide defaults. Here's what we see when we query the object's values. The value for any given key is taken from the first instance of that key in the chain of maps. This allows a very simple way to have local values that override system-wide values that override the built-in defaults. 
Now let's dive into some additional information. In part two, we looked at ways to mock external resources so that we could write a unit test that wouldn't accidentally delete files. A test for the code in this video needs to mock the file system resources by mocking the path class. Here's how the unit test would look, starting with a high-level outline of the test class. Here we have imported unit test, then we defined class, further imported from unit test mark. This provides a boilerplate structure for a unit test. Mocking a path becomes rather complex because of the number of distinct objects involved. There's a summary of what kind of object creations occur. First, a call to the path class creates a path object. The test process will create two path objects so we can use the side effect feature to return each of these. We need to be sure that the values are in the correct order based on the code in the unit to be tested. Then we added this code. For the value of the system path, there will be a call to path objects exists method. This will determine if the concrete file exists. There will then be calls to open the file and read the content. For the value of home path, there will be a call to the expand user method to change the tilde character to a proper home directory. The expanded home path is then used to create the three alternative directories. For the purposes of unit testing, we've decided that the first path to search doesn't exist. The other two do exist, but we expect that only one of these will be read. The second will be ignored. For mock paths that don't exist, we can use this code. For the mock paths that exist, we have something more complex, like this one. We have to also handle the processing of the file via the mock open function in the mock module. This can handle all of the various details of files being used as context managers, something that becomes rather complex. The with statement requires enter and exit methods, which is handled by mock open function. We have to assemble each of these mock objects in reverse order. This assures that each variable is created before it's used. Here's the entire setup method, showing the objects in the proper order. In addition to the mocks for path manipulation, we've added one more mock module. The mock load object is a stand-in for the undefined load config file function. We want to separate this test from the path processing, so the mock object uses the side effect attribute to return two separate values, expecting that it will be invoked exactly twice. Here are some of the tests that will confirm that the path search works as advertised. Each test starts by applying two patches to create a modified context for testing the getConfig function. The first use of patch replaces the path class with self.mock underscore path. The second use of patch replaces the loadConfig file function with the self.mock underscore load function. This function will return two small configuration documents. In both cases, the context being patched is the current module with the name value of main. In cases where the unit test is a separate module, then the module under test will be imported and that module's name will be used. We can check to see that the load config file function was called properly by examining the calls to self.mock underscore load. In this case, there should be one for each of the configuration files. Here, we've made sure that the self.mock system path file is checked first. Note the chain of calls. Path function returns a path object. The object's open function must return a value that will be used as a context. The enter method of a context is an object that will be used by the load config file function. We've made sure that the other path is one for which the exist method returns true. Here's the check for the file names that are built. The forward slash operator is implemented by the true division method. Each of the calls builds a separate the path instance. We can confirm that overall the path object is used just twice. Once for the literal etc profile and once for the literal tilde character. Note that the two files answer true to the exists method. We expect, however, that only one of those two will be checked. Once this is found, the second file will be ignored. Here's a test that confirms that there's only one check for existence. 
Just to be complete, we've also checked that the file that exists will go through the entire context management sequence. The first call is for the self.exist objects open method. The return value from this is a context that will have the enter method executed as well as the exit method. In the previous code, we checked that the return value from enter method is read to get the configuration file content. Amazing! In this video, we have learned to find configuration files.